Okay, any questions before we get started on the notes? Questions about LTA or the quiz? Yeah, the LTA is due Friday, but not today. Okay, the next LTA is due Friday. No, that's a question. That is an answer. Oh, wow. <laughs> the next one is due Friday? Yeah. I gave it like a week ago. Okay. Yeah, two weeks ago. The test is Thursday. Okay. Um, this Thursday. Number nine on the quiz. What does number nine say? Yeah, you do. It says five things here. Okay, calm down. I got a D in class. Find two gradient values of beta. Zero is less than or equal to beta, which is less than two pi. Right. That satisfies hands yeah. theta equals negative square root of three. There you go. Sydney? I didn't take this on product. I'm still looking at that. Mm. Now you gotta make it. Guess you'll take the retest. <laughs> I was gonna do it tonight. Well, you can take the retest then. Okay. No big deal. It's gonna be the same thing. So I guess you get a little more review. So tangent of theta equals negative radical 3. What value of theta gives us radical 3 for tangent? Oh, yeah. no, I, I didn't do this. Uh, pi over 3? So remember, tangent equals sine over cosine. And if I do sine of pi over 3, cosine pi over 3. Ow. Well, sine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. And cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. We should have those memorized. Yeah. So to simplify this, I get radical 3 over 2 times. Remember, we flip and multiply. 2's cancel. I get my radical 3. The angle I'm talking about is well, it's negative radical 3, so tangent is negative, remember, in the second and the fourth. And some of us missed that on the quiz, too. So, negative pi over 3. So we're in our fourth quadrant. We'll give us radical 3, negative radical 3. So then it wants two values between 0 and 2 pi. Well. It would be um, my reference angle here, pi over 3, and my reference angle here, pi over 3, would give me the negative radical 3. So I just have to find two positive values that are coterminal with those angles. So this angle here would be 2 pi over 3, right? 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3 would get us back to pi. So that's a positive value between 0 and 2 pi. And then another angle that would give us negative radical 3 for tangent <coughs> would be 5 pi over 3. Right? Because then 6 pi over 3 would get us back to the beginning. So the angles 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3 are between 0 and 2 pi, and they both give us the value of negative radical 3. Okay, but how are you supposed to know that the tangent equals the pi over 3? Because you're supposed to know that tangent of pi over 3 is radical 3. It's one of them I had you memorize. Or if you didn't know that, hmm, yeah. Or if you didn't know that, you could have done this and got to radical 3. So that's going to be on the test? Yeah. Can we do like a cosine or like a sine instead of a tangent? I don't know. I'm feeling that. That's We'll see. Okay, you got another question? What's number four? Okay, so secant, 300 degrees. What is secant equal to? One over cosine. I think you put one over sine, didn't you? I didn't do it. Oh, you just didn't do it. Okay, so secant e of 300 degrees is 1 over cosine of 300 degrees, but we can't take cosine of a angle larger than 90 degrees. So what would my reference angle be for 300 degrees? 60. 60. 
Right? Because 300 is going to be almost. Oh, yeah. 300 is going to be almost all the way back because the circle is 360 degrees. So that means my reference angle is 60 degrees, and 60 degrees is the same as pi over 3. Can we also do number 3? Because I looked at that. Well, we're not done yet. You guessed so hard. Yes. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. And then so our answer is 2. Is it positive or negative? Is cosine positive or negative in the fourth quadrant? Uh -huh. Positive. My x values are positive because I'm on the right side of my y-axis. So it's a positive value. Wait, I got that answer with a whole lot less work. And I need to go back and do that every time and still get the correct answer. I just did 1 over cosine times 300 and got 2. You did 1 over cosine of 300 okay, and yeah. got 2. So I can do that every time, or is that just luck? It was luck that this was a whole number. If it would have been, if it would have been, for example, 330 degrees, then my reference angle would have been 30 degrees. It would have been pi over six, and our answer should have been radical or two over radical three. And you never would have come up with that answer. You're right. Yeah. Okay. And did we have one more? Number nine. We just did number nine. What's number three? Okay. A right triangle has an acute angle theta such that cotangent of theta equals 15. Find the cosine of theta. So it has an acute what? angle. Cotangent yeah. equals 15. Okay. So what does tangent equal? Sine over cosine. Sine over cosine. Or if we're talking about trig. So ka toa opposite over adjacent. So cotangent it must be equal to adjacent over opposite. We can learn that. You don't need to learn that. <laughs> That's, that is just one over tangent, so we've flipped it. You have to know that. I thought you could only do that with the 1 over something. Not with the word. Okay, and it says cotangent is equal to 15. So that means adjacent over hypotenuse, or uh, I'm sorry, adjacent over opposite has to equal 15. So 15 over 1 gives me 15. And then it wants, what does it want? Sine cosine. Cosine of theta? Mm -hmm. So to find cosine, we need adjacent and hypotenuse. So to find the hypotenuse, Pythagorean theorem, you end up finding the hypotenuse is radical 226. So cosine, <laughs> really? Now that I've got my hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, but we didn't have any one of those answers, so you have to rationalize it. <coughs> what you said we would not have to do. Anything from the, I want to do one from the LTA, but if there's any other questions, I'm going to do number 10 because no one got it right. Um, on the LTA? On the LTA. Not a single person got all, you got all the points? No. Not a single person got number 10 right. You got one point. You got one point out of five. I got one point. You got four out of five. And I know what you did. Most people got four. So, would you please read off, Kay, would you read off number 10? I'm sorry. Yeah. Two, uh, guys. Two T plus pi over four. Two Two T. Two T. Pi over four plus three. That's it. 
Okay. So first thing we got to do, find our period. Okay, but remember when we got this 2t in here, we have to divide that 2 out. So that means I really get cosecant 2 times t and then plus pi over 8. Oh yeah. Right? Because it's like we got to divide both by 2. So now I get my period. Well, cosecant is 1 over sine. Right? So we're going to have 2 pi over k. Well, my k in this case is 2. Twos cancel. Yes, they can cancel. And I get a pi. Altitude. Um, then what do we got? We got count. Well, that's going to be pi over 4. I think we have four intervals. And then we have a horizontal shift. Pi over 8. And because it's a plus in there, remember when it's in the parentheses, you got to go backwards. So it's left. Pi over 8, left, no vertical shift. Okay, so now we draw our graph. Remember, I suggested you start out with the sine graph and then draw the cosecant. So our intervals, and this is where a lot of us messed up, we're pi over 8 left. So the so if I say my count is pi over 4, if we get a common denominator, that should be 2 pi over 8. Right? If we get a common denominator of 8. So what everyone did, well at least those of you that got 4 points, is you said my first interval was going to be on the y-axis. Well we have to go 2 pi over 8. So you have to go over to here until I get to my first interval. <coughs> to the positive pi over 8. Then I've got 3 pi over 8. Then I've got 5 pi over 8. And then I've got 7 pi over 8. And I'm just adding 2 pi over 8 each time. So if I were to draw my sine graph, right, in our... Let's see, just one half. Here. Okay. I do not reach 1 at the y-axis. That's not my first interval. I have to go 2 pi over 8. So here is my first interval. Then I hit the x-axis at, or I'm sorry, my sine graph yeah, hits the x-axis at 3 pi over 8. Okay, so that's my sine graph. They want cosecant. What are you looking at, Kayla? Well, I'm that there. Which one? One at the top. There's one. A one? Mm -hmm. The point. It's at pi over 8, not at the y-axis. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then cosecant is going to have asymptotes whenever my sine graph equals 0 or equals the x-axis, remember? So then my cosecant graph is actually going to be in purple. And all of you that got four, put this first interval on the y-axis. Okay, I just want to make sure we got that because everyone missed it. Let's go over the notes. Law of signs. That's the first one right there. So if you didn't do your notes, that's important. I would have that. Hold on a second. So they want us to find this side x. Okay, it's important to know that we can use law of sines when we have angle side angle side angle angle and side side angle that's when you can use law of science so angle side angle if we had this side we could use it 
or let's see, side, angle, angle, if we had, so here we have side, angle, angle, so we can use law of sines. Or if we had sides, yeah, side, side, angle, we could use it. So we need to use law of sines in order to find x. A couple ways we could do it. I solved for angle C, and I just added these up, subtracted it from 180, and got 114.4. So then I know, I know side 17 corresponds to angle A. So sine of 37.5, and this could be rewritten A over sine of A as well. So I'm just doing the side over the angle. And then C over sine 114. So divide, we can do this computation here, multiply by sine of 114, and we get C equals 25.4. X side C, because it's opposite my angle C, so it's going to be side C. The capital letter corresponds to the angle, the lowercase letter corresponds to the side. So it's lowercase C, 25.4. Makes sense that it's going to have to be larger than 17, because it's opposite a larger angle. Yes, sir? Why'd you put the sign on the bottom? Right, this can be rewritten as A over sine of A, same difference, yeah. Cool? Hold on one second. Use the law of sines to solve for all possible, maybe, all possible triangles that satisfy the given conditions. So I like to draw them. Let's see. We're just getting some random triangle here. Right, we're not dealing with right triangles right now. So they've given us side A is 30, side C. So if I say A, B, C, side C is 40, and angle A is 37 degrees. You gotta solve the triangle. So you gotta find the missing angles and the missing side. So, law of sines. We have side, side, angle. So we can use law of sines. So I'm going to have sine of A over A equals sine of C over C. Plugging what I know, I know A is 37. I know side A is 30. I know, I don't know the angle C, so I'm going to leave it sine C. And I do know the side C is 40. With me so far? We can compute this calculator, make sure it's in degree mode. Multiply by 40. We get 53.4 degrees for my angle C. So now we can find my angle B, right? Just 180 minus these two, and that gives us 89.6. So maybe I drew my angle a little too obtuse, but it's definitely an obtuse angle. No, that's Q2. So we have three, I definitely drew it way too <laughs> obtuse. <laughs> but that's all right. Not drawn to scale. Uh, so then we've got our three angles. We're still missing our one side. 
So we're going to have to do a different um, law of sines computation. Which one do we want to do? We're definitely going to have to incorporate B. So let's do sine of 89.6 over, we're looking for side B. And let's do C. Well, actually, let's do A because we know A is definitely 37 degrees it's given. So we should go back to use the given information. Cool with that. All right. So then compute this. This is going to be sine 89.6 divided by this, right? Because we're going to switch our denominator here. We've done this multiple times now. So sine of 89.6 divided by our answer here gives us uh, 49.8. So roughly 50. But we're not done. Because it says solve for all possible. So here's my 50 for this triangle. It says solve for all possible triangles. So there's a chance in our law of sine triangles that two different angles could satisfy these conditions. So to test that. So do we only look those up when it says all possible? No, they'll all, they'll all say all possible. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, that's great. But it's real simple check. So I found, let me redraw my triangle. So they told us angle A was 37 degrees, right? They told us side A was 30, and side C was 40. So we found angle C to be 53.4. So to test if there's another angle, well, what is 180 minus 53.4? And that gives us 126.6. So then to test to see if 126.6 could be a viable angle, add it to the given angle. Maybe, if the border is. And that gives us... 163.6, which is still under 180, so we do have two different angles that satisfy these conditions. So that means 126 works for angle C, and then that would leave us angle B of 16.4. So that gives us 126.6 and 16.4. So two different triangles satisfying the same conditions. And yes, you're going to have to check every time. And then the only thing we're missing is side B for this triangle, right? We have everything filled out but side B. So if I solve for side B, wants to write in black apparently. So they give us, like I said, go back to the given information. We know, we know side A and angle A, so let's use that every time we can, because we know those are exact. So then uh, compute this, multiply by sine of 16.4, and we get B is equal to 14.1. Now we've solved that triangle. A little bit of work. We understand the steps. Yep. Mm -hmm. Kind of. And the last one. Again, use the law of sines to solve for all possible triangles. So I'm going to draw my awesome triangle, and we've got A is 50 degrees side, and let me label them. Side A is 50, and then they gave us this side B is 100. So, 
We're going to use law of sines again. We know side, we know side A, angle A. We're looking for angle B. We know side B. I'm sorry. Yep, side B. Compute this. 100 divided by our computation gives us sine B. And then remember, if we're solving for just the angle, we have to do the inverse sine. We all know where that is on our calculator, right? Okay. So it's the second and the sine button. And that gives us um, undefined. Can't take the sign larger than one. I put error. <laughs> error, undefined, yep. So what exactly makes this one different from the other ones where you have to use the inverse? We're solving, well we had to use the inverse for the last one too, I just didn't show, I wanted to make sure I touched on it here. Where? We would have gotten, we would have gotten sine so right here, when we did this computation, we would have gotten sine, I don't know why this doesn't want to write, C equals 0.8024. It's less than one, so we can do it. And then you do inverse sine of 0.8024. That's how we got our angle C of 53.4. So you go ahead and do the regular sign first, and then you take the inverse of it. Well, you have to do this sign. Okay, so let me break down. I'll go intermediate step. So sine of 37, I'm not even sure that I... Yeah, see, I just kept it all as... I multiplied by the bottom here, so I kept it all as 40. That way I didn't have any rounding errors. Times sine 37 over 30. Right, I multiplied by the 40 to get it off the denominator. That's equal to sine C. And then just take second sign of all this. That way you don't have any rounding errors. But how do you know when you use the inverse versus not? Because we're solving for a missing angle. Okay. So every time you're going to do a missing angle, you're going to use the Mm -hmm. Every time you're looking for a side, you're not. Right, because we're already going to have, like for instance, if you're looking for a missing side, you're going to have both angles. So you're going to do sine of 37, like if we were, okay, so for instance, if we're miss, looking for a missing side, like we have sine, I'm just, it might not be a working triangle, but sine of 50 over 30, and sine, come on, of 80 over 60, oh, I'm sorry, sine of 80 over x. You'd compute the sine of 50, compute the sine of 80. All right, so your answer will actually be x. So you do sine 50 over 30, and you do sine 80 divided by that. So sine 80 divided by sine 50 over 30. So your answer there will give you the side length. And I wanted to do, oh, I'll let you guys work through it. Any questions before I give you your practice problems? Okay. As always, if you have questions, please ask.